Hey guys, um, I have filmed this video seven times and each time that I film it, I realize that I'm just rambling. I don't say anything of substance and I never end up uploading it. I have gotten to a point now where I've been off YouTube for about two and a half weeks and I'm ready to come back and explain sort of where I've been, what's been going on, if any of you are interested. Uh, I've had a lot of questions this week specifically because I think when you miss a week, it's like, eh, but when you're missing two weeks, it's like, oh, what? where are you? I'm just gonna warn you. This video may come off whiny. It may come off, woe is me. Um, and it is certainly not the point of this video, but there's going to be a lot of explanation as to what's been going on in my life the last few months, specifically this last month. And I don't want to see any comments that say like, oh, you're just complaining. Oh, you're being a whiner, blah, 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 blah. This is my life and it's been a lot for me, regardless of if you think these are real problems, they're a lot for me. And I understand that there are bigger things going on in the world. While there are a million horrifying things going on, this is what's happening currently in my life. And so um, when it directly affects me every single day and stuff that's going on, I just ask that you please be kind to me as I will be to you. But if you are abusive or shitty to me in the comments, you will be blocked. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck anymore. Bear with me because I will somewhat explain what's going on with me lately. But I'm going to get ready while I'm doing this so that there's something interesting to look at. I will not be talking about what I'm using or anything like that because it has no basis to the point of this video whatsoever. And it's all products that I've been using for the last, oh, I don't know, forever. I'm gonna put timestamps in the bottom of this video so that you guys can skip to whatever part you're interested in. If you don't wanna hear about the remodel stuff, uh, I'm going to make sure that you guys had a way to skip past this because I don't want to bore anyone with anything that they don't care about. I'm gonna backtrack and then I'll explain what's going on as of recently. So as you guys know, in June, we started remodeling our home. I've been saving up for it for years and I, I own a really, 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 really old house and it had a lot of issues, but we wanted to remodel it fully. I've been talking about it for so long that any of you have been following me for a long time, you know that like this has been the plan since like 2012, I think. We finally saved up enough and we started remodeling our house. We hired a guy that we thought was gonna be great. He was really the only one that returned the phone calls. He got good reviews, not a ton, but still good enough reviews that we felt comfortable hiring him. The process went smoothly. He always was prompt in returning emails initially. And so we were like, you know, we feel confident with this because we didn't know. So the process started and initially he, he was, coming and he would show up at like seven o'clock in the morning and leave at like four. So it was really nice. I was still able to film and get stuff done. And then things started changing, but we were just really ready to get the process going. So even though there were little minor things we were annoyed with, we <laughs> let them go because we were just so excited to be remodeling. So basically what started happening was his website stated, our, our team of craftsmen will come in and expertly craft your home into this beautiful, well done, immaculately designed space. Okay, so we were like, fuck, that sounds great. We hired him and we were expecting a team of craftsmen to come in and expertly craft our home. There was no team of craftsmen, there was one guy with tools. And we were initially like, mm, that's weird, but you know, whatever. I mean, maybe he's just prefers to work alone. Maybe that's just the way that he likes to do things. Anyway, what we realized is when one guy does something, it takes 10 times longer than if a few guys were to come in and do it. Cause we were expecting a team. So we were like, yeah, yeah, bust that shit out three months. And I asked him, is three months realistic? And he was like, yes. Before he started the project, before we hired him, I was like, I, I think three months is kind of what we're looking at. We don't have so much that it wouldn't be able to be done in three months by any stretch of the imagination. So he started and again, there was no team. So things that should take a relatively quick amount of time weren't. And what we discovered was that, so say that there needs to be windows that needed to be put in. We would ask him like, hey, have you called the window guys? And he'd be like, no, no, I'll, I'll call him soon, I'll call him soon. And we, we know that like, you can't do the backsplash right here until the window's replaced. So get the windows going so that by the time you're ready to do the backsplash, the window will be in 
and then we won't have to wait. Nothing will be held up and we won't be without a kitchen. That was our first complaint was that he would wait until the day the windows need to be installed to call the window people. And then they're six weeks out. And so our kitchen is still without a backsplash and it got installed three months ago, still without a backsplash. It doesn't really matter. It's not that big a deal, but it's the, the principle of it. So we were starting to get frustrated because everything was ordered at the last moment. And so everything was held up. I mean, I'm not kidding you, everything. It, it just got to a point where we were like, God, this three month project, we're now four months in and the bathroom's not even started yet. On top of that, the first thing that happened was that we left for LA while the floors were being installed. And we were nervous about this, but it was back when I was doing the hourglass meet and greet. And I couldn't miss this. I didn't wanna miss the thing just to stay at home and keep an eye on the contractor. He gave us a price quote for the floors and he said, the floors are gonna cost with my labor, with the square footage, including the floors, $25,000. And we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's crazy, because we these aren't like crazy expensive floors and they're snapped together. They're real easy to do. So I got a second quote, not to be a dick, but to say that like, if I can get it for even half the price, same floor, same install from a different company, I'm gonna do that. Not because I am trying to disrespect you in any way, but to get a second quote, because that's what you're supposed to do when you remodel, just FYI. You're never supposed to just go with the first quote. That's just not what you do. So I called a second company, they came out and they gave us a quote and they said that it would cost 10,000 for the floor, for the install, everything. So we came, to, we came to the contractor and we were like, hey, not to disrespect you at all, but this company is gonna do it for $15,000 less than you're quoting. And he got all pissed off and he was like, you know, you hired me to do this job, you wanted me to do this, like, and then you go and get a quote from somebody else. That's just a lot. Like we were we were expecting it to be less. I didn't realize it was gonna cost so much. And so we're, you know, we're just trying to save money where we can, not to be cheap because we would love to use you, but realistically we can get the same floor installed by these people for a fraction of the price. And so the contractor came back to us and he said, okay, I'll do it for $12,000, so there, theirs was 10. I'll do it for 12,000, but I'll get the squeaks out of your floor because that was something that we really, really wanted. We have w wooden floors in this house and they're old and we wanted to get the squeaks removed. And uh, he was like, I'll remove the squeaks from your floor. I'll also remove your old floor and install base shoe, which we need anyway. And the other place wasn't gonna install the base shoe. So I was like, you know what? $2,000 more, but to get all that extra work done, I think that sounds good because one thing we made very clear to the contractor was that our biggest issue with this house was the squeaky floors. The floors squeak when you walk on them because the subfloor and the wood floor are like, there's like a, a layer in between them and they squeak. And I don't like that. I didn't want to lay new floor on top of squeaky. Trust me, there's a point that I'm getting to, trust me. We call him when we're in LA right before he goes to install the floor. And we said, hey, just wanted to make sure that you remember we want the squeaks out of the floor. And he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll get the squeaks out. We get home and we are super excited because our new floors were installed and we walked in the house and we immediately were surprised at the floor is equally as squeaky as it was before, but all these brand new floors on, installed on top. So we've got these beautiful new floors that are like, right, 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 right. And it just, it's just odd. Like even people that don't know a lot about houses walk into our house and they're like, they're like, what the fuck? And I'm, I was super annoyed, but I looked at my husband and I was like, well, maybe he tried his best. So we brought it to his attention. He's like, yeah, I, I put screws in. I did my best. And then a month goes by and we're annoyed. And every time we walk on the floor, just we look at each other and we're like, motherfucker stupid floor is so squeaky. We paid 2000 extra dollars to get the squeaks out because we had already brought it to his attention. He's like, I did my best. And I just, I, th I thought, you know, what did we pay that extra money for when you didn't even do it? And I was watching a lot of Property Brothers during this time and I watched the Property Brothers and he said, yeah, this room was so squeaky. It took 5,000 screws to get the squeaks out, but we got them out. And I thought, did my contractor put 5,000 screws in or did he stop at 12? Did he stop at 20? Did he actually keep going until the squeaks went out or did he just give up? When I watched that Property Brothers episode, I was like, okay, well, I'm, we have to bring this to his attention. Like, sack, we have to just tell him we're unhappy. Like we paid all this money for the floors and we're unhappy. One day he was at our house and we 
Zach, Zach did. And it was, it was such a chilled conversation, I want you to know. I was sitting on the couch editing a video and Zach was like, look, um, we gotta do something about this floor. Like we're pretty unhappy with the way that it squeaks. And the contractor flew off the fucking handle. He was like, I did my best. I never promised anything. I did everything that you guys asked me to do. Do you wanna see the fucking picture with the squeaks? And we're like, Jesus Christ, like, yeah, we would like to see the picture actually because it still squeaks. He's like, it doesn't squeak every time you walk on it. And we, there are two very specific spots that are like huge spots where they're just rang, rang, rang. I mean, it squeaks every time. I've lived here for five years. I know that it squeaks. And he flew off the handle, throwing his arms up in the air, grabbed his tool bag, storms out after cussing at us and telling us that like, I did my fucking best. And Zach and I looked at each other and I was like, what? the hell like he just flew off the handle so i texted him because he left and he left midday it was like noon he flipped out and left and so i texted him and i said basically very very along the lines of like as a contractor and as your clients we should hopefully be able to express our concerns to you without it getting aggressive and uncomfortable I want to be able to express my frustration with certain things if I feel them because, you know, I like to have it the way that we wanted it and the way that we discussed. He never messaged me back. He just showed back up at the house and just kept working. And that moment, Zach and I looked at each other and we went, if we want to bring anything to this guy's attention, he's going to flip the fuck out on us. And we just want this remodel done. We want it done. We were getting closer to the end. He was already starting to work on the bathroom. So we thought, whatever. Well, when he started working on the floors upstairs, the floors were squeaky upstairs and I stood by him and I was like, if you could just really please try to get these squeaks out. And I stood there and he was like, he screwed like six screws in. He's like, see, still squeaky. And I'm like, can you do six more? Still squeaky. And I'm like, can you do 60 more? I, I was just standing there. I'm like, keep screwing until it stops squeaking. Lo and behold, the floor stops squeaking. And I was like, see, you can get the squeaks out. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just trying to say like, I'm not doubting you as a professional. I'm just saying that when I stood here and had you put screws in to my level of anti-squeakiness, it worked. There are a lot of things that are done in this house incorrectly, but we were biting our tongues because we knew that he flies off the handle when you bring things to his attention. So we were just gonna try to deal with them. Just, 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 just deal with it the way that it was. Each day that he would leave, we would go look at his work and we would never say anything to him while he was here. We would bring certain things to his attention like, hey, is that area gonna be fixed? And he's like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it later. I need you to understand. I'm not just saying this because it is who I am. I'm a very, like I talk to people like, hey, I'm just wondering, um, I'm like the nicest bitch in the world. I swear, I can, I can get upset, but I never did with him. Never, never did we fly off the handle. By the way, I'm gonna get to my life stuff in a minute. This video is gonna be long as fuck. So I just, I, I'm sorry. I just, I have to get this stuff off my chest. I never flew off the handle with this guy. I never cussed at him. I never, I never ever treated him with disrespect. I was always so respectful. I always took his, if he was like, I'll, we've got it, I'll take care of it. I always trusted him. I always did. So when I was unhappy with something that he did, I would bite my tongue and I would be like, okay, Christy, just, you can either fix it later or just deal with it. You know, even though you're unhappy with the way this looks, whatever. And I would sometimes bring little things to his attention. Like when the drywall was done crappy downstairs, I was like, this just looks, he didn't do it. It was a drywall team. And I was like, look, this looks bad. And then he skimmed the kitchen instead of putting drywall in, which nobody asked him to do. And it's cracking. And we were like, it's cracking. And anyway, we would bring little things to his attention just so that he knows like, Hey, we see this stuff. Can you, you know, fix it? I was never giving him budgetary restrictions. I was never financially being like, mm. cut some corners here. We have money that we don't want to spend. We were getting closer to the end of the project and he was laying the tile in the upstairs bathroom and it's a hex tile. He asked us what size spacers we wanted and we told him we wanted the eighth inch spacers and it all started going in looking pretty good. And then at the end, when he finished and started running out of tile, he realized a couple days before, he's like, ooh, I might run out of tile. I didn't realize. And I was like, oh crap, would you like me to order you some more? And he said, no, I should be able to fully finish with what I have here. The back, I may need to use some, some pieces along the edge, but it won't matter because those are already cut pieces. Well, I was like, okay. So when he got done doing the floor and he had already set everything and he left for the evening, Zach and I went to look and he had installed broken tiles. And I'm not talking like he cut them broke. It wasn't like along the back edge. Like he said, like there's a tile that is a big hex that was two pieces split together. And mind you, we're gonna have black grout so you can see all of the splits and all of that. 
and he didn't use spacers back there. So, so everything else is an eighth inch spacer, except for this back corner, which isn't underneath the vanity. He's like, it'll be under the vanity, you won't see it. We have an open vanity, you can see the floor through it. You could see all of these mistakes. You can see the broken tile. There's quarter inch spaces on some of them. So when the black grout is in, you'll see a giant thick black line. And then this one over here is an eighth inch spacer. And then this one's a half inch. I mean, things are so off. I I'll show you in a, in a video. So I was like, what the fuck is this? Like it, this is half-ass work. Like this is, this is just getting the job done. Even though I could have ordered more tile, it would have taken an extra few days, but it would have been done right. No, no, I can do it. I'll get the tile. So I got upset. And I realized in that day too, that the drywall he did in the bathroom is covered in in cracks and gaps and and bumps and it's not smoothly sanded at all. It's just gonna be this this hokey pokey job that we didn't ask for. We didn't ask for a shit job, we asked for a good job. And there's a lot of other things too. I can I I've I've filmed everything and point out everything that's that's wrong. And when you guys see it you're gonna be like, what the fuck? I needed to go to Home Depot for something. And when I was on the way to Home Depot, I went on my Instagram stories and I started bitching. I never said the guy's name. I never said his business name. I've never once even made mention of him whatsoever other than to say the contractor. So I was basically just saying like, I'm, I'm upset because I'm paying all this money and I feel like he's doing a half-assed job and I just feel like I, I could do a better job than this. Like I'm, I'm upset with the fact that like, I'm paying so much money and that I'm getting like a relatively half-assed job. Like there's just a lot of things where if I showed you, you'd be like, why did he do it like that? And exactly, that's the point. So I said it on my Instagram stories. And then after 10 minutes, I deleted it. 10 minutes, mind you, 10 minutes. It was up for 10 minutes. I deleted the Instagram story. It was like 15 tiles long. And I was like, you know what? I shouldn't be bitching on my Instagram story. Somebody even mentioned, they're like, you know, you probably shouldn't have this up there. I'm like, yeah, you're right. That was a bad mistake. I just got upset and I said it on my Instagram story. So the next day I get a text from him and he's like, so you could do it better, huh? And I'm like, what? And he was like, ring a bell. And I'm like, oh, I see. You saw my Instagram story. I didn't realize you were watching my Instagram. And he's like, I don't watch fucking makeup videos. It was one of my friends. And I'm like, okay, so you have your friends watching my Instagram stories, same difference. And then he just goes off. He's like, I don't, wouldn't, I don't feel comfortable being your contractor anymore. I've never had an unhappy customer. You cannot judge an unfinished job. And I'm like, not a single room has been finished. Not a single room. How would I judge a finished job when you move from a half done kitchen to a half done bathroom, to a half done bedroom, to a half done upstairs bathroom, not a single room's been finished and you've been doing this for five months. How could I judge a finished job? There is nothing finished. So he said to my husband, he was like, if you guys have something to say, say it to my fucking face. So my husband called him and he's like, yeah. And he's like, you know, I, I've never been disrespected like this. I've never, by the way, I didn't say his name. I didn't drag his business. I didn't say anything. And I'm allowed to express my frustrations. And he's like, you should say it to my face. And Zach's like, the reason we didn't say it to your face is because you fly off the fucking handle. When we bring even anything minor to your attention, you act like we're so crazy to even be considering that maybe there could be something we're even minorly unhappy with. And and you fly off the handle. You don't, you, you don't take constructive criticism well at all. Even if we bring it to your attention so gingerly, and, and we are, we're so gentle. We're like, hey, just wondering. Uh. We're like so fucking pussyfoot about it because we're so afraid that he's gonna fly off the handle and he flew off. Like he literally lost his shit and degrading our job. All you do is sit at fucking home all day. First of all, you've been paid every Friday, everything you've ever been owed from us. You've been, you've never had a single cent. I've never even like sat there. I've never yelled at you. I've never done anything. I've done everything. You show up at noon most days and leave at three. Like he started off showing up at seven and leaving at four. And then by the end, he was showing up at noon and leaving at three. And, and we were never like, hey, where the fuck are you? Never. We were always like, hey, have a good day. I don't care if I'm home all day. It is none of your concern when you are being paid every Friday as you are owed the money. I never once was late on a payment. He would hand me the bill Friday and 15 minutes later, he would have a check in his hand every Friday. So for him to insinuate anything about our fucking lives is disrespectful and completely unprofessional. I'm sorry, I'm getting upset. He, he went off. He was, he was saying that we were, that we were ungrateful, that he's bent over backwards for us. When have you bent over backwards? We were never hard on him ever, other than bringing up the one squeaky floor issue, which we weren't even mean about, ever. 
he said, I will not fix it unless you pay me, basically. He said, I'm not gonna do that for free. That's what he said about the floor. So anyway, he went off and he was like, I don't feel comfortable working for people that are unhappy with my work. I've never had an unhappy client. I used to work for XYZ company and they're incredible and they love my work. I could be doing so much bigger work, but I chose to come work for you guys. And we were like, so are you saying you're quitting? He's like, I don't feel comfortable working for people that are unhappy with my work. And he's like, I'll finish exactly what I wrote on that bid, but I would know more. And I was like, you know what, fuck you, dude. Like, fuck you so hard for, first of all, making fun of our job. I know they're unconventional. I know I'm a YouTuber, but sorry, that's what we, that's what we do. That's what, that's what I do. I don't know what you want from me. Fuck you for flying off the handle at us when all I did was bring you a minor concern. And, and the thing is, is that I'm allowed to say whatever I want on my social media and I didn't name him. I could have if I want to be a dick. I'm not going to, but I could be a total dick and go off, but I didn't. So we let him know, like, no, you've been paid in full up to this point. I don't feel comfortable having you back in my house when you're such a loose cannon. And um, frankly, the work that you've done has been subpar and I'm unhappy with it. And I would now, and then we, so we had new contractors come in and they looked at the work that he did and they're like, this is terrible. We had three different people come in and they were all like, no, 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 no. We have to redo all of this. Like we have to redo the shower area. We have to redo the floor where he didn't use spacers and use broken tiles. We have to redo the drywall here. We have to redo the ceilings that are cracking. Um, the, the lighting and wiring right here was done incorrectly, which he shouldn't have even done wiring. That had to be subcontracted out because it's against the law. Basically all these things that he did were wrong. And so he wants to say that he's a super professional guy, but when we had other professionals come in, they're like, where's the permit for this? We're like, what permit? He didn't pull. It's like, oh my God, dude, what? So anyway, we fired that guy, but the new people couldn't start until what's going to be this week. So it's been seven weeks without a bathroom. I don't have a shower. We don't have a bath. We don't have anything like that. And um, he still hasn't returned our key. So now we have to deal with all of that. He told us he wouldn't return the key unless we paid him. He's, he, it's, it's a fucking nightmare, dude. But we've had one of those situations with contractors where it's a nightmare. Now I realize we're 30 minutes into this video and I still haven't gotten into the family emergency that's kept me off of YouTube for the last two and a half weeks. Mind you, this whole contractor thing was happening while I was still uploading videos three days a week. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Then in the middle of all of that, I was um, noticing that my cat is looking really frail and she's just not looking good. She's just, she's, 20 years old and I just realized that she was seemingly losing weight and she just wasn't as active as she wanted, not as hungry. And so I was like, you know, I'm gonna take her to the vet. I got her blood work done and then she was diagnosed with late stage kidney failure. And I've had this cat since I was 10, okay? So mind you, I did not take the news well. Um, she's my baby. I've had her since I was dressing up as a spice girl, you know? It just broke my heart to see her withering away. So. In the next couple weeks, I took that time to do everything in my power to get her a little bit more comfortable. And so I was getting her subcutaneous fluids a few times a week. I put her on a supplement to help her kidneys. I took her to the emergency vet a couple times where she wasn't feeling well. I was having her on anti-nausea medication and uh, we did a run of antibiotics to help her. And because I stayed here with her and was really, really adamant on getting her help, I feel like it really did because her numbers went from like 120 is what one of her numbers was, which was like her creatinine or UN, I'm not sure which one it was. And she went from like 120, which the normal level I guess is 20 and hers was 120. And then with all the care we did, we brought her down to 40, which is really good. That's like early stage kidney failure. So it's not perfect, but it's, it's better. That's for sure. I, I'll take any win where I can get it. Her other level was like an eight point something and it was supposed to be a two. And then with all the stuff that we did, we got it down to a four. Way better, it's way, way better. So she's actually perked up quite a bit after getting her fluids and getting her medications and really like keeping a really close eye on her. It's really helped her a lot. So I'm really glad that we didn't just euthanize her because that was possibly one of the um, options that we needed to do. But I'm really glad we took the time to spent getting her healthier and now she's just a little bright eyed. She's so skinny though, but you know, she's eating all day now and she's super hungry and she's super thirsty and she's got a great appetite and her numbers are still good. And we're feeding her kidney diet and everything. So that's at least one win. Um, she's not gonna live forever and we're never gonna fix her kidney disease, but you can at least manage it. And so I feel like we've managed it pretty good, but then we had a family emergency. 
and I'm not gonna talk about what that was because it's not for YouTube. It's not something that I wanna discuss. It rocked our lives in a way that nothing ever has before. Basically, I'm gonna tread lightly when I speak because it's not fully me, my thing to speak about, but we had a family member get displaced with this family emergency and they're now living with us. It's a teenager. At first, we were the emergency call when things went on and we were the emergency call just for like short term, you know, help. But we just found out yesterday or day before yesterday that we are now long term housing. And that is really difficult because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I've never lived with anyone before. I've never taken care of anyone before. I've, I am not a mom. We're, our house is still, you know, half torn up. The new contractor hasn't started yet. So it has been really, really difficult on everyone involved. Like we are honestly constantly at our wits end. And I have cried more in the last month than I've cried in like my entire life. I'm not even exaggerating. It's been, it has been emotionally trying and exhausting and um, thrown our lives for a loop. And while I'm always happy to help, I'm not gonna lie and say that it hasn't been like the most difficult thing because I, I thought that the older I got, the more I would be just like, head on my shoulders no way no way in hell I mean I'm fine I, I get through my days I realize that like things take an emotional toll on me that they never once did before they they affect me like they never have and emotionally I I can handle it and I can get through my day to day and I'm fine but I realize that something that used to maybe make me slightly sad now just rips me to shreds and it's hard it's really really hard I don't know how to handle things that are completely out of your control. I'm a very, very control-based person, like very. I need everything to be front line and center. If there's a problem, I like to have a solution. And that's me my whole life. I'm a solution to the problem type of bitch, always. I want to find the, I, I want to hear the problem and I want to find the solution. And in this circumstance, there is no solution. There isn't one because it's out of my control and I don't like things being out of my control. It makes me feel out of control. I have been handling things as best as possible. I have filmed this video seven times. I have done this. I have said this multiple times and I just am in an emotional position when I'm doing that, that I'm not, these lashes are damn gorgeous, God, sorry. I don't even know what they are either. They were just sitting there, but they're so beautiful. Uh, emotionally, like at the end of filming, I am like, did I say anything? Did I get any of my point across? Did I? Did I say anything of value or helpful? And I always come to the conclusion that no, I didn't. And I always get too emotional or I start to cry when I was filming. And I normally feel like a strong person and I feel like I can handle any situation. And I will admit to you that I'm not strong anymore. And I'm working towards getting back to that person because as as usual, I'm almost always a, half, a, a glass half full type of bitch. Almost always. I can see the good in any situation. And when someone's like, this is going on, I'm like, yeah, well, at least X, Y, Z. Like I can always be one of those people, except for right now. When everything in your life seems to be falling apart, you get through one of them and then another one finds you, you're like, are, are you fucking kidding me? Like when is life gonna give me a break? And I realize so wholeheartedly that things could be so much worse. That's where I think that people always wanna say things like, you're so strong, you're, you've are you got this. And through this, I have not felt like I'm strong and that I've got this. I told my husband the other day, like I'm not what people think I am. Like people always wanna say like, I, I'm, you're, I'm so proud of you, I'm so, you're so, you're so strong, you're so strong. I'm not strong, I'm not. And I've been weak as hell throughout all of this. And I've been just, on the edge of crying at all times. And I have cried a lot. I've done a lot of it. <laughs> I've done a lot of it in the last few weeks and I, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy the feeling of it. I don't like, I don't like feeling like I'm not in control of my emotions and I have felt that way and I'm not gonna lie about it. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it because the fact of the matter is 
the last few weeks watching, you know, the perfected lives on social media and people s talking about their like incredible situations they have going on, I have felt very jealous of their lives being good and feeling like mine is not. I think that that's one thing that we're almost taught, like don't complain because it could be worse. And I think that's almost like a toxic way to look at life because yes, it could be worse, but I, I can be validated in knowing that like, it's okay for me to be upset. It doesn't change anything. But um, I've just realized now over the last couple days when, when I had my breakdown, I really can't change my situation that I'm in right now. I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is try to do what my husband suggested. And he was like, you know, what we can do is turn it into like, 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 like it really is a life is what you make it situation because I've been making it miserable in my mind. And I have to turn it around because I can't live in this miserable mindset anymore. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's not good for me. It doesn't help me in any way. Living in this miserable mindset is all it's done for me is make me, woe is me, my life. It doesn't change the outcome. All it does is change my perception of the world. And that's what I've discovered through all of this is that it just felt to me like I had to mourn the loss of, of my privacy because I'm a very private person. I am a bottle it up type of person. Like in every way, I always take care of everyone else first and every other situation first before I take care of myself. I always say this, like when you're on the airplane and they say secure your own airbag before securing anyone else's. That's not me. I secure everyone else's. I make sure everyone else's is nice and tight. And then I die because I don't take care of myself at all. That's just the way I am. And I don't know why I'm like that. I don't know. I mean, my husband has literally had to tell me like, Chris, you have to start taking care of yourself. And I realize I'm like, I am. He's like, no, you're not. You're not taking care of yourself at all. So last week I was in LA because he told me, he was like, you need to go. You need to get away. You need to step away from all of this because I'm doing that. I'm making sure everyone else is tended to and well cared for. And then I myself am like a wreck. <laughs> so these last few days I've taken to self-reflect and look at myself and be like, okay, he's right. I'm not um, doing anything that I need to be doing for myself. And I have taken a little bit more time to situate things to where now they're able, able to be handled not just by me. And Zach's really picked up a lot of the, I mean, he's picked up all of it. He's the most incredible husband. I literally could not ask for a more supportive, more incredible person to share my life with. That sounds so lame, but I'm not kidding when I say that like, if it weren't for Zach, I couldn't do any of this. He has been the most amazing husband, like the most supportive, the most kind, the most wonderful. And I, I could not ask for anyone better. I'm so lucky and I'm so happy that I have him. And if it weren't for him, oh my God, I don't know what I would do. He's been just wonderful. So um, shout out to Zach for being the best. Halloween, you guys know I'm, I'm the, Halloween is my everything. I've never missed a year of Halloween videos. I've never, I've never ever not done Halloween content. And so it literally kills me that I haven't been able to do anything because I love it so much and I'm sorry, but I realized at this point I need to quit apologizing for things that are out of my control and I need to just start accepting the things that are in my control and dealing with them and, and doing my best. So I just wanted to explain to you that I'm not just blowing off YouTube. Well, in a way, because emotionally I just can't handle it, but I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to just be like, bye. Um, I just, when I get to a point that I feel like everything is going chaotic around me. It's the beginning scene of Garden State. That's how my life has felt. The be the very opening scene to Garden State when he's in the airplane and the plane is crashing and everyone around him is flying and there's this, the, the oxygen masks are swaying left to right and he's just sitting there staring forward like, oh my God, this shirt is very Garden State. Oh my God. <laughs> and he's just sitting there losing it silently in a state of pure like what the fuck is going on that's how I feel and now that we've gotten things situated so before the um before the person that's living with us uh 
sleeping on the couch and we needed to figure out a situation when we found out it was going to be basically a permanent living situation for the time being, which we don't know. Maybe not permanent, but open-ended. We don't know the end date. We made them a room last night and bought a bed and a dresser and got all the clothes in there and got it set up really cute and um, really homey so that they feel like they have a space to stay in. You know, I don't want them to feel like like a like a guest in a house but more um a member of the household and so when we got that set up they had their own space they could get away from us and just go hang out in there and just relax and it was nice for them and it was nice for us because it gave us some space as well um I'm, I'm a very like like I said I'm a loner I take a lot of baths I haven't had a bath in six weeks it's killing me um so things are finally I hope starting to improve and that's where I wanted to let you guys know that I am just doing my best here and trying to um, get my life back on track and um, start doing my regularly scheduled videos, my sponsored videos when they come. I'm going to start working again and getting myself in a place that is back to normal. So if my attitude is a little bit off, I'm going to do my best. I'm doing better after I had that cry the other day because that was like my my relief cry that was like my, okay, this is the way things are now, deal with it cry. What I'm gonna go do right now is I'm going to go uh, decor shopping for, we, we decorated our porch for fall and Halloween. Handing out candy is my favorite thing in the world. I could literally die of the cuteness when I see like these sweet little innocent babies in their little costumes, trick or treat. I cannot handle it. So every year I really dress up and we decorate our porch. We put a fog machine out and we like do the whole nine yards because that is like my joy seeing like these sweet, innocent little sweethearts come up and like a ask for can I think it's just the sweetest thing and so uh, we're gonna go get some more decorations and like make our house really cool we put like a big spider out and like spider webs and stuff it's really fun so um that's what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna go get more decor and stuff for the house and just kind of try to um make my space really nice around me so that I can feel like I have some control over something and um that's kind of what I plan on doing today I'm not wearing highlighter who am I who am I? Oh, there she is. I, I, I was looking at my face and I'm like, is that it? Did I do all the steps? No. No, you did not. Oh, I'm going to use, actually, this is the Amrezy highlighter, which is the one I always use. But yesterday I used highlighter from the Pure Midnight Masquerade face palette. And it's this one right here. And it doesn't, it's kind of unassuming when you see it in there. But when I put it on, it was like, gorgeous it's like goldy I don't know let's see look at that oh if you guys got this in your boxy charm you may want to give it a try even if you looked at it and you were like I don't know it doesn't look shimmery in here really it just kind of looks like almost like a matte powder but when you apply it to the face it's like bitch anyway I think I'm gonna head out now I'm probably just gonna throw a gloss on my lips and then be done with the day but I appreciate you guys so much and just know that I do love you and I've seen every kind message I've seen every kind DM I've seen people being like hey where are you at I I see it all and each day I sit with a massive amount of guilt in me because I'm not back on YouTube and people are always like don't worry about YouTube I, I do <laughs> it doesn't matter what people tell me not to worry about I, it's my number one worry because this is what I do for a job now like this is my job but it's also my love I did it for years making no money at it and now it is my career basically and so I do take it very seriously I apologize but this is the time if I had a conventional job right now I would have been taking a couple of weeks off of work anyway so this is exactly what I would have done when I did work in the veterinary hospital for five years if this had happened to me there I would have been like peace I, I, I can't work and they would have understood because it's a very very serious Thing. So I uh, I apologize. I've been getting some messages of people being like, wow, what a privilege to be able to take that much time off of work. It is a privilege. That's why YouTube is so beautiful to have that I do that I am in a position that I can just take time off of work when I need to. Because if I had had to just like put on a smiling face through all of this, I would not have been able to I can't do that. I'm not one of those people that can be like, like you'd have to like fake a smile and I'm not that person. I'm just not a fake smiler. So uh, it's been a beautiful thing to be able to take time off when needed. And I thank you for allowing me to do so and for being so supportive and wonderful in the process. And I, I um, will do my best to just be as 
frequent as possible with YouTube. I'm going to try to get back to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and maybe even some bonus videos here and there. And people are going to say like, take it easy, take it easy. I know, but I know what I'm capable of. And I know what I am, have been just putting off because of my mental health and mental health is really important. I think some people discount the fact that pushing through sometimes is not the best thing to do. I know that sometimes it is good to like push through and push through. But for me, sometimes I need to like take that step back and be like, bitch, you need to just, and that's what I've done. And it's been nice and things are getting taken care of. And now we can get back to hopefully regularly scheduled programming. I apologize if there is no Halloween videos during this month, it'll be my first year and it kills me, but you know, shit happens. That's <laughs> Life motto right now is literally shit happens. And uh, yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video.